Fear. It can hold you back from a lot of things. It can hold you back from traveling. It can hold you back from having relationships. It can stop you from making photos when you feel uncomfortable taking them. And often, the barrier to becoming great is simply overcoming fear. This morning in Tbilisi, the streets were still a bit messy from the night before, but we had no fear because we had Peace Dog on our side. 4.30 in the morning and Greg is up with me and we're gonna go take some photos of this Peace Bridge. The Bridge of Peace. <laughs> Police going by. Maybe this wasn't a great idea. <laughs> it's the Bridge of Peace, we'll be fine. I was mentioning to Greg that usually I love shooting sunrise. I prefer shooting sunrise out in the world. I like seeing the world wake up. I like watching a city wake up. But often in Europe, like in Germany for example, I've had some rough mornings shooting sunrise just because there's so many people that party so late, five, six in the morning, that they're out at sunrise. And you sometimes get these shady characters or really drunk characters out in the middle of the night. And it can be a little bit scary. Um, this morning in Tbilisi, it's busy still. I mean, it's 4.30 in the morning, people are still out from the night before, and I'm not sure it's gonna be all that quiet and peaceful down at the Peace Bridge. It's not slow-mo though. It's okay. I'll go slow mo myself. It's not Whoa. 60 frames either though. Whoa. Whoa. So we're on the Bridge of Peace, and yeah, there's a couple people hanging around, but it's really not that bad. And this bridge is just awesome, but it's so hard to photograph because you just kind of want to get it all in. You want to get every bit of it. And I guess that's the first shot is trying to get every bit of it. I'm going super wide, 16 millimeters. I probably could go 14 millimeters even. And um, yeah, just really, really wide trying to capture the shape of this bridge. tell this is gonna be one of those mornings that the blue hour lights gonna be amazing and then it's gonna fizzle off at sunrise just because there's so much cloud on the horizon so I'm trying to make the most of this blue hour light that is really nice and contrasty right now I'm on shot number two which is down on the waterfront looking up at the bridge I've got the palace in the bottom left and then there's another church over there as well and the bridge kind of frames it and then also leans towards another I believe it's another church but although it says cafe that's lit off that way Way. and it's not mind-blowing but I do think it works This view down the river opposite the Peace Bridge is just beautiful. It's a little bit dark right now because it doesn't have light, but I do want to try to get a third shot that way, potentially. shot down the river doesn't really work just because there's no light and it kind of just all looks flat so I think that's a shot I'll come back to at some point we still have two full weeks here in Tbilisi um, we're done shooting in the morning because the light went dull as I kind of expected but Jody's shooting a food video today a street food video and when there's food involved yeah, we're gonna get involved too. So that's how we're gonna spend the afternoon. I think we're gonna go back, crash for like a half an hour, an hour, and then go eat all the food.
This dog back here followed us basically as soon as we got onto the bridge. I think it's the guardian of the peace bridge. The peace dog, if you will. And now we're leaving and we're kind of wondering if maybe the dog is ours now. He's such a sweet dog and I'm just, yeah, I feel a little bit sad leaving him. And I'm wondering if he'll follow us all the way home. Because if he does, there's no way I can tell Jody that we don't have a dog. Bye, peace dog. Nope, looks like he's coming with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. Let's peace go. dog. Oh, this might be as far as peace dog goes. Bye, peace dog. Nope, yeah, he's coming with us. Yep, we have a dog now. Okay, so we got rained out again today. It's kind of been uh, a little bit crazy, the weather here in Tbilisi. It's been like really, really, really hot during the day. And then in the afternoon, we get hammered by some thunderstorms. Also, it's the World Cup going on, so I kind of just wanted to take the afternoon off and watch, watch, watch Croatia try to beat France. And yes, I am rooting for Croatia over France. Although my head tells me that France is probably going to win. Anyways, I'm going to chat really quick with you guys just to fill out this video because this morning shoot was kind of, uh, it was kind of short. So um, I want to talk about safety because a lot of times when I'm out shooting in the morning at sunrise, you guys are always worried about my gear and about me. And even at the start of this video, I was a little bit concerned about me and my safety and my gear. But the truth is it was totally fine this morning in Georgia. And every time I go out, it usually is totally fine. In fact, I have to say it's always fine because never have I ever had an issue with going out in the morning. But in Europe, and not just in Europe, in South America as well, and lots of places in the world, People party really late at night. In Canada, people party until like 2 in the morning, maybe 3 in the morning if they're getting crazy. So when you go out at 5, 6 in the morning, you're by yourself and you have places all to yourself and it's really nice to just be in this peaceful, quiet place. But in places that party until 5, 6 in the morning, places like Argentina or Germany or basically most places in the world not called England, Canada or the US, people party so late that when you go out to shoot sunrise, the drunkest of the drunk people are out exploring their way to get home when you're out shooting and it can be a little bit unnerving. But I have to say, I've never had an issue. I've never once in all my years shooting, knock on wood, have I ever had a problem with my gear shooting in the morning. Yes, there's been times that I've kind of felt threatened. There's been times that I felt uncomfortable and had to move on, but there's never been a time or situation that I've felt like I, I need to like run <laughs> or I need to escape or a time that I've actually had my gear stolen in the morning or something like that. So I think it's important to note. And I think it's also important to note that you sometimes need to make yourself uncomfortable and put yourself and your gear in uncomfortable positions to get the shot. If this is your job, if this is your career, if this is what you do, you can't worry about your gear. Sure, you can worry about yourself and you should protect yourself. But when it comes to your gear, you have to take the risks to get the shot. That's your job. Your equipment is essentially, they're your tools. And if you don't bring them out, if you don't take them out with you, you're never going to get the shots you need. I remember really, really early in my career, I was in Bolivia and I really wanted to explore this one town. I hadn't been there before. It's uni at, next to the salt flats. And I left all my camera gear in my hotel room just because I was worried that I was going to get robbed because town seemed a little bit shady. It seemed a little bit rough. And yeah, I left all the gear back home and, and the entire day as I was walking, I was just seeing shot after shot after shot that I wanted to make and that I could have made, but I couldn't make because my gear was at home. So if you really, really want to make images, if you want to turn this into your career, you do have to take the risks with your gear. And that's not to say be stupid and do stupid things with your gear that's going to get your gear destroyed, but you do have to go out for sunrises when you feel uncomfortable. You do have to take your gear out in places that you might feel like it's not very safe. I've taken my gear out in some crazy places, places I probably shouldn't have. I've taken my gear out in Cité Soleil in Haiti. I've taken my gear out in some of the favelas in, in Rio de Janeiro. And yeah, I think it's just a necessary requirement of the job. And the other thing is, I think personally, 
If you have big camera gear, you're probably less likely to get robbed than somebody with a phone. And that might sound stupid, but the reality is, big cameras are hard to steal, for one. And second of all, I think that people see that gear and think of you as a professional and are a little bit worried to grab your gear or steal your gear just because they think that it'll be easier for them to be caught, if that makes sense. Whereas swiping somebody's cell phone from a regular person on the street, they might not have that same fear. So um, I have been robbed. About seven years ago in Ecuador, I had my gear stolen from underneath a seat in a bus which was partly my fault because <laughs> you should never leave your gear under a seat in, in Ecuador. It was between my feet, I thought it was safe, and somebody came behind me while I was on the bus, totally awake and conscious and, conscious and looking at the bag, and they sliced the bag open from the bottom with like a surgical knife and pulled the gear all out of the bottom. So it does happen, you do have to be careful, but don't let the fear of getting your gear stolen hold you back from making the photos that you want to make. And yeah, I think that's it for the talk today. Um, tomorrow, we are leaving Tbilisi, not forever, but just like for a couple day trip exploration into the hills and the countryside. And basically we're heading towards the Russian border. And I am so excited for that. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today's video. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.